Hi everybody, just thought we'd do a quick build today. This is a CW transceiver called the Pixie, which I've just purchased. And uh, it's a very easy and quick build. So let's have a look, see what we've got. Okay, so in the packet, we've got uh, all the components that we would need to actually build this uh, little kit. As you can see, there's the hardware, some chips. Uh, well, there's only one chip actually, some electrolytic capacitors here. Uh, looks like a couple of coils and uh, the board itself. Uh, you can see the board itself is uh, beautifully silk screened. It's got all the component values written on it. And if we look at the other side, pads are a bit small, but other than that, all nicely spaced out. I think this is uh, going to be a good kit. There's no instructions in this uh, kit, so what they do give you um, is a layout of the board, uh, that's just a silk screen, and a parts list. And as you can see here, there's some beautiful Chinglish translations. The other thing they give you is the circuit diagram. And uh, nicely laid out, and uh, the circuit diagram works even better if it's the right way up. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is just take everything out of the bag. What we're going to do is just put everything on the table, um, depending on what it is, and uh, we're going to start marking off and making sure we've got everything that we need to actually build this kit. So uh, we'll just lay everything out here on the table. With a pen, I like to just make sure that I mark off and confirm that all the values of all the components are exactly what we've been given. And uh, good job I did do this because I had a couple of resistors that were the wrong value. And in the kit, they also supplied me extra capacitors. And so here we are, soldering on the first component to the radio. Start with all the resistors, then I'm gonna move on to the capacitors and uh, then I'm going to go on to the coils and the diodes and then finish up with the hardware. And what I tend to do is as I'm going along, I make sure that each component is in there nice and tidy and then mark off with my pen that I've actually fitted it onto the board. There we go, and uh, repeat until complete. So as you can see, this is the, the resistors. On this kit here, they're mounting vertically. And uh, what I do is I just bend the component legs over on the other side so that it doesn't drop out of the board, like so. And then solder. And then when it's nicely fitted and we're happy with our solder joints, trim the component legs off and that's another one complete. Just visually check and make sure everything's okay. And there we go. So here we are, all the resistors are now fitted, including the variable resistor in the middle as well. Now we're going to move on and install the capacitors. So working with the ceramics here, just going around installing each one. As you can see, I'm working quite quickly here, going through installing each capacitor and doing exactly what I've done before, bending the legs over so it doesn't fall out and trimming off. Now you see here, this component is a bit high and uh, that was a mistake that I've, I've, I've done there. So what I've done is I've just heated up the pants again and apply some pressure with my finger just to push it through the board. That's a good way to get over the problem if your component is, is a bit high on the board. Good. So let's move on to the electrolytics. As you can see, all the capacitors are installed and uh, it's looking quite nice. So 
So electrolytics obviously need to be put around the correct way. And on the body of the electrolytic capacitor, you'll have a white stripe usually, or a minus symbol at least. And as you can see on the board here, they've labeled the silk screen nicely so that the plus and the minus are very clearly marked out. And it's just a case of making sure that the negative goes to negative. I'm pushing it all the way down. And again, like all the other components, I just widen the legs out so it doesn't fall out the board. Okay, so now we're moving on to some of the discrete components. And what we're putting in here is to put in the IC holder. And what I've done is I've just bent one pin over to hold the actual IC holder in place. And now I'm just going through each pin separately, soldering in place, and making sure it's fitted nice and tidy onto the board. It's worthwhile taking your time here. Um, there's no race, it's no rush. Excellent, and that's nice and tidy. All installed on the board. As you can see, the board is starting to fill up nicely now. Okay, so we're on the home stretch now. I'm just putting all the sockets in place for the key, the headphones, the antenna socket, which is a BNC connection, and the power connection. So again, take your time. Now I'm installing the antenna connection here, which is the BNC connection, and I've actually installed it and it hasn't fitted particularly flush against the board. So again, what I'm doing is I'm just applying some pressure on the plug using the side of my uh, breadboard there and just heating up the pad and gently moving it so it uh, fits a bit f f a flusher on the board. And lastly, I'm fitting the power connector. This was quite loose to put in, to be honest with you. So what I've done here is I've just tacked one of the terminals and um, apply some pressure on the plug on the top, heated it up on the bottom so it's lit, flash, and then solder the rest of the pads in place. And finally, we're fitting the audio chip, the LM386, and there we go. That is one complete Pixie project. Now we're on to testing. So what I've got here is I've got the um, key, some headphones and a battery installed. You'll also notice that the um, in the kit there is a testing resistor of 51 ohms. And what I've done is I've just wedged that in the aerial socket and there we go. So just turning up the volume here, using the KX3 to produce the side tone at the other end and also um, make sure that we are transmitting. Now because I used my wife's uh, pudding bowls for holding my components, She's nicely taken my Morse key away from me, so I'm having to just touch these wires together to simulate the Morse transmissions. Obviously my Morse is better when it's actually using a key. And there we go. That's the Pixie 2 CW project available on eBay. I'll put a link to the project and the link to the actual product on eBay itself. And um, yeah, go and have a go. It's a very simple project, very easy to build, and you'll have great time um, building it. I'm going to go out with this kit on my next video and see if we can actually hook up with a contact on 40 meters. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you again next time. Bye bye.